So in this video, we would like to talk about recursive methods. So here's the basic idea. Suppose that I like to calculate a sub n for all values of n, n equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. Now, what I do is I try to find a n as a function of, let's say, a n minus 1 or a n minus 2, a n minus 3, and so on. For example, I might find out that a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus 2 a n minus 2. Now, if I know a0 and a1, from these two, I can calculate a2. And from a1 and a2, I will be able to calculate a3 and so on. So that's the basic idea. And there are many situations in uh, probability and com combinatorics that we can solve problems using recursive methods. And today we want to talk about one of these problems. It's a very famous problem called a uh, gambler's ruin problem. So here is the problem. Two gamblers, call them Gambler A and Gambler B, play repeatedly. In each round, A wins $1 with probability P and loses $1 with probability Q, 1 minus P. So it like, it's like we toss a coin each, in each round, a coin which, uh, for which probability of uh, uh, heads is equal to P. And if the result is heads, A wins $1. And if the result is tails, then A loses $1. We assume initially A has I dollars and B has N minus I dollars. So the total amount of money that they have is N dollars. So the game ends when one of the gamblers runs out of money. In which case, the other gambler will have all the money, N dollars. And the assumption here is that, of course, the Rounds are independent. So th these coin tosses that I mentioned are independent. And the goal here is to find PI, the probability that A wins the game, given that he has initially I dollars. So in the problems like this, that we have, a, for example, a, N coin a large number of coin tosses, or in this case, a large number of rounds, an interesting idea, a usually good idea, is to condition on the result of the first round or condition on the result of the first coin toss. So we assume here that A has I dollars, right, at the beginning. Now, after the first round, what can happen? Well, either A wins the first round, which can happen with probability P, and after that, A will have I minus I plus one dollars, or A loses the uh, first round with probability Q equals one minus P, and in which case, A will end up with uh, I minus $1 after the first round. So in some sense, we are looking for PI, the probability that A wins, uh, given that uh, he has uh, I dollars. We can relate PI to PI plus 1 or PI minus 1. So in fact, we can use the law of total probability here. because A either loses or wins the first round. So we condition on the first round, and we can write this. PI, probability that uh, A wins, given that he starts with I dollars, is equal to probability that A wins the game, given that A wins the first round, times probability that A wins the first round, plus probability that A wins the game, given that A loses the first round, times probability that A loses the first round. So if A wins the first round, then he, he will have I plus one dollar. So this probability is equal to PI plus one. So probability PI is equal to PI plus one, probability that A wins given that he, fir he wins the first round, times, of course, probability that he wins the first round, which is P, this probability here. Plus, if A loses the first round, then he will have I minus one dollar. So it's like that we are starting over, and A starts with I minus one dollars. So P I minus one times probability that A loses the first round, which is one minus P, or in this case we call it Q. So we can rewrite this equation as let's call it P I plus one is equal to I just uh, write it as one minus P times pi minus q over p, pi minus 1, 
right? I just rewrote this equation. And that is our recursive equation. Note that we have I, pi plus 1 in terms of pi and pi minus 1. Now, in the special case that A starts with $0 and, you know, B starts with N dollars, A is the automatic loser. So, we can say P0, probability that A wins, given that he starts with $0, is basically 0. And also, probability that A wins, given that he starts with N dollars, is basically equals 1. Because in that case, B will have no money and A is the automatic winner of the game. So, using these two values and this equation, we can fall, find all values of pi's. So, let's say if n equals 3, for simplicity, uh, what do we have? Let's say if i equals 2, I get, or let's say start if i equals 1, I obtain from this equation p2 is equal to 1 over p, p1 minus q over p, p0. And if you put i equals 2, I obtain p3 is equal to 1 over p, p2 minus q over p, p1. Now, here, we know p0 is equal to 0, so this term is 0, and p3 equals 1. So we obtain p2 is equal to 1 over p, p1, and 1 equals 1 over p2, um, sorry, 1 over p times p2, minus q over p, p1. So note that we have two equations, two unknowns. Our unknowns here are p1 and p2. You know, p is given in the problem. p and q, q equals 1 minus p. Is a probability that a wins in each round. So we can solve this, and if we solve it, we can find, I believe, uh, p1 is equal to 1 over 1 over p squared minus q over p, and p2 is going to be 1 over p times that. So it's going to be 1 one over p minus q minus q. Yeah. So for n equals 3, we get these values. So in fact, you can solve this equation for any n, uh, for any n, and in fact, this equation is of the form that we can solve it systematically and the way to solve it we have discussed this in the text uh, if you are interested you can look uh, there um, and if we do that for a general n we obtain pi equals 1 minus q over p raised to the power of i 1 minus q over p to the power of n that's the general answer note that if q equals p in which case both of them are uh, one half if q equals p equals one half then we, we get zero over zero here so if you basically simplify that you will obtain pi equals i over n in case that q equals p and if q is not equal to p then that's the general formula so these two formulas uh, give us pi the probability that a wins given that he starts with i dollars and it's interesting if you look at these equations and this problem we can conclude why people who gamble repeatedly go to casino repeatedly will end up losing their money and the reason for that is that uh, it looks that you go to casino uh, and you gamble a lot and in those games first of all n is a very large number because casino has a large amount of money and usually n is much much larger than i the money that the person has and also in casino games p is less than one half the, because casino has some advantage in each round casino has more chance of winning than the person who is playing there so if with these two conditions if you look at these equations you will find out pi the probability that the person wins is going to be extremely small okay thank you